Every day in the USA, people find themselves in court. Mark does call the case. People versus Lee, Leah Pearson. On behalf of Ms. Pearson, Ms. Pearson, if you can state your name for the record. Uh, Leah Pearson. Gunner, I did have the opportunity to review the pre-sentence investigation with Ms. Pearson. Um, the only material change I have is on page three, first paragraph. It states that November 2022 is whenever the Dearborn case occurred, but that's actually this case. It's not the Dearborn. Um, besides that, uh, uh, I did review the recommendation. Um, she was requesting possibly a sober link tether instead of a scram tether. Um, the last scram tether she had has resulted in the scars on her leg. Um, and then also she's trying to become a real estate agent. It's hard for her to go to showings with that on. Um, so that's why we would ask for the sober link. Um, in addition, we'd ask for uh, no jail time. She is a military veteran. Uh, she's a psychiatrist regularly, two to three times a month. She's launching her career as a real estate agent. This event was from November of 2022. She also works on a podcast and has a job interview set up uh, at Fox 36 as a news broadcaster. So she has a lot going on right now, uh, positive things going on in her life. Uh, she has three children. And then she's also in on probation in Dearborn, where she's reporting monthly. Uh, as of right now, she is in compliance. So for all of those reasons, we would ask for the sober length instead of the scram, and then the jail time be sus suspended. Ms. Pallier. Yes, Trace Clara on behalf of probation. Um, <clears throat> thank, thank you for hearing me, Your Honor. Um, I just wanted, although it's provided support, um, I do want it placed on the record that by Ms. Pearson. I did take those into consideration when the court the, the, the recommendation for the upfront jail. Um, on this case, Ms. Pearson did have a strange tether on her uniform face case. Um, she did have some tamper obstruction violation. Um, those occurred uh, as listed in the report. There was one from October 17th to October 18th, another one from October 25th to October 27th. Um, she was removed from her scram tether then on October 30th, and she had another violation. Um, I'm sorry, the October 26th violation was not known to the court prior to her being taken that scram tether on October 30th. Um, that court did address a violation on October 17th, extending her scram for a period of one week. However, she, when they learned of the violation from October 26th, they did have a show cause, and I believe that that was last week. Um, I don't, I believe that they just continued the probation to see what this court Further, when Ms. Pearson was before this court, she was advised if that scram tether came off um, at Dearborn Heights, she was supposed to re-argue. She did not do that um, when that information was provided to me in our support for events. And the court did issue that with no bond. So there's currently a warrant in place with no bond. Um, given all of the violations and all of that consideration, probation would ask that the jail time stay placed for the violations that she did today. Um, probation would also like to bring to the court's attention, although I'm sure you've already read the report. Uh, Ms. Pearson did indicate to Von Schwartz when she completed her assessment that she last ranked um, on December, it was a week prior, so it was like a week ago. So there's continued use of drinking, and so probation had is for Ms. Pearson. Um, I believe that sober link is not enough um, monitoring, and I would ask that the court also keep a scram. Your Honor, the two violation for the scram tether was caused by the obstruction or ob obstruction. Um, Miss Pearson has maintained that she never obstructed. Uh, in Dearborn, she was sentenced to an additional seven days on tether for that. Um, I she 
their scarring on her leg caused from this. And I think that's maybe possibly part of the obstruction where she's trying to kind of move the tether because she's in actual pain from the tether. Um, so, I mean, I, we'd just be asking for sober link. And your honor, I would also like to point out on one of the obstructions, the date from the, on the date from October 19th, that violation report from house arrest indicates not only the obstruction, but at the time of obstruction, alcohol was detected. Oh, that is no, that is absolutely incorrect. Ms. Pierce, no, ma'am, ma I'll hear from you. Okay, and I before you say that, well, before you say that. I have house arrest reports and have read them through. So you go ahead and say what you want to say. So is there anything you want to say before I impose sentence? Yes, Your Honor. Go ahead. First of all, now this is the first that I'm hearing that there has been evidence of me of alcohol in my system while I was on the tether. I did not drink the whole entire time, 97 days, including some days, because I didn't drink for about a week prior to me getting the tether on. So I literally went over 100 days without drinking, having the time to be able to self-reflect and go back and realize and understand that I did make a lot of mistakes. More than anything, I was working in an environment that I shouldn't have been working in and I should have left it a long time ago. This happened a year ago over a year ago in your guys's court and what happened in Dearborn happened almost now a year ago. So I've done over a hundred days on, I've done almost a hundred days on the tether for Dearborn Heights. I've spent $1,600. I've had to pay fines. I, I mean, like this, this whole entire experience with Dearborn Heights has like literally shaped my life in a positive and in a negative way. And this now having to go back and do more time and do all of this, like I've already had to put off my real estate career, different job um opportunities because of this situation. Like I'm, I've been ever since I got on, got my benefits and got awarded my VA claim, which just happened in May of this year after fighting for 10 years to get my VA claim benefits. I finally got my benefits in May. And since I got my benefits in May, I've literally been seeing a VA therapist as well as a civilian therapist. And now I'm seeing a VA psychiatrist to see about getting on a form of medication to handle my PTSD, my depression, my anxiety, and things like that. Because I understand that I have maybe no, I understand that I have absolutely been irresponsible with liquor at times, but more than anything, I have other issues that are deep rooted further than alcohol. And that's what I'm trying to correct and work on for the sake of my children, for the sake of myself. And so that I can be who, who God has called me to be ultimately, like it's deeper than alcohol. And I'm literally taking every step that I have to. I've done everything that Dearborn Heights asked of me. And those two obstructions that they're talking about, I never physically tried to obstruct the tether. I did everything that they asked of me. I can't explain why they're claiming, why are they are saying that I had an obstruction and now why they're saying that, that alcohol was found in my system? Because I know for a fact I did not drink the entire time I was on that tether. And as far as December 2nd, goes i told um the the i told the lady that i i literally had i didn't under i i guess i was not under um i didn't understand that i was supposed to not drink at all once the tether came off on december 2nd it was my best friend's birthday we literally had a girls night in at her house we didn't go to any bar any club anything i literally was in we were in christmas pajamas i stayed the night at her house we had jello shots and things like that it was literally like a birthday party and that was the only reason I drank that day. Like I haven't drank outside of that since I've been off the tether. I don't even want to have, I don't even want to drink. I don't even have the desire to drink. So I'm just saying that I have learned from the situation and everything that has happened. And I understand that if I get into trouble again, the severity, and then I'm going to go to jail and all of these things, I understand all of that. And I, I truly do feel like I've been rehabilitated with the situation of being sober, completely sober for over, you know, for a hundred days and, and literally having the time to reflect back and, and make positive strides in my career and in my spirituality and in my mental health and everything. It's not, it's not about liquor. It was way deeper than that. And I'm working on those things now. 
And I actually spoke to a psychiatrist in the VA yesterday and they, she, after giving me an assessment has ruled that she feels that I may be suffering. For, I may suffer from borderline personality disorder, which could lead to a therapy called dialectical behavior therapy, which we are now in the process of trying to get that all formulated. So I'm working on myself. It's, it's the liquor was just a, a crutch, I guess, or whatever. And I, yes, I was irresponsible, but I've learned from this situation. I understand the severity of it. And I understand that it could have been way worse. I could have killed someone. I could have killed myself. I understand that. And I've learned from that. I have three kids that I have to take care of. I'm the only person that they have. Like, I cannot be in jail. And this tether thing, if I have to get on a tether or even a sober link and all of that, that's only going to negatively affect what I'm trying to do professionally and, and, and what I'm doing with my mental health. Like, I'm trying to do what I have to do, sir. And that's really all I have to say. Ms. Coons, has she seen the house arrest reports? No. Um, so I verbally, we've talked about it verbally, but no, she has not physically received a copy. Okay. And no one ever told me that there was, that there was like, proof of, of liquor in my system even those two obstructions that I had nobody from the scram place ever called me and said hey um we're, we're noticing that you have an obstruction we're going to need you to come in within 24 hours nobody ever said anything they didn't say anything about this so-called obstruction until a month later when I went forward for my probation um when I called for my probation check-in that's when they said oh all of a sudden you, a month ago, you had an obstruction. And I'm like, what? Like, out of nowhere. The, and then and then now I get my tether taken off and they're trying to tell me that three days before I was ordered to take my tether off, I I, I, I violated again. That Like, that's not true. Well, when your tether came off, you were supposed to get on one of our tethers and you haven't done that. But your honor, the I was I wasn't under that impression. The last time that I went in front of you on the Zoom oh. call, your honor, I remember you telling me that we were going to allow me to finish the time on this tether before you had made a ruling. No one ever told me that I had to go within 48 hours and report. I don't recall that at all. That's the only reason I never went and reported and got another tether. I was not under the, I did not, was not aware that I was supposed to go do that. I thought I was waiting until December 13th to be sentenced. That's what I thought. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. She's got to get herself over and get a tether on her. I'm going to adjourn her sentencing out to the 20th. She needs to see these reports. I'll set her sentencing for December 20th, 2023, 9 a.m. in person. She needs to be here. It's not going to be by Zoom. Um, and I want to... She's going to have to look at these reports because if she's going to tell me what she's telling me, um, she needs to do that in the face of being able to see these reports because just in, in fairness, and if that's the story she wants to tell me, then fine. But um, I'm seeing something very different than what she's saying. December 20th, 2023. 9 a.m. in person. Thank you. To clarify, the tether is today, correct? The tether, she needs to get that tether on today. Okay. Your Thank Honor, you. I don't. I really don't have the money to pay for that. I really do not have the money to pay for that right now. I do not. That cost me $1,600, and I did barely had that. I don't have the money to pay for that. I have three children that I'm taking care of that I have to provide for Christmas for. I'm supposed to be going on vacation with them on the 20th. Like, this is going to ruin everything. This is going to ruin my kids' Christmas. <laughs> Look at it this way. I have three or two drinking events. I have two indications of a tampering with the tether. I have also an event or events out of um, out of the other court. And so bottom line, ma'am, you're going to have to get on the tether.
I don't know how Thank I'm you. supposed to pay for this, Your Honor. How am I supposed to pay for this? Ms. Pearson, we can discuss this over the phone, but I don't think this is a negotiation at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Court calls the case, People versus Randall Stockton. Good afternoon, this is the public defender on behalf of